Amid the ongoing gun control debates, one of the least compelling arguments, in my opinion, for increased regulation asks a question of needs. Do you really need a 30-round magazine? Do you really need a semi-automatic rifle? Do you really need a gun that's made of scary black plastic instead of common-sense hardwood? Well, it's the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Needs, and the great thing about a right is it exists independent of your opinion of my exercise of it, therefore the question of what you think I need is irrelevant. But beyond that fact, if what we allow as a society is defined only by needs, defined only by what you need to survive, rather than defined by the freedom to find what brings you happiness, a lot of your life is suddenly on the regulatory table, from frivolous hobbies to things that are actual necessities, at least to maintain your quality of life. Do you really need a car that does 0 to 60 in 4 seconds? Do you really need a TV with 4K resolution? Do you really need YouTube? on which you're watching this video right now, do you really need anything fun and exciting? Why can't you just settle for basic sustenance and enjoy your mediocre, heavily regulated life of safety? And maybe you don't like those examples. Maybe you consider the regulation of recreation and entertainment to be different from the regulation of weaponry. In any case, consider the route down which this thinking leads in the context of the UK, where a judge now says knives are too sharp and filing them down is the solution to soaring violent crime. After all, do you really need 8-inch or 10-inch kitchen knives with points, he asks, following the lead of London Mayor Sadiq Khan, who said in April, nobody needs to carry a knife. There's never a reason, in fact, and those who do will be prosecuted. The truth gets infinitely stranger than fiction in the UK. I don't see a clear line where this thinking ends. It's almost assuredly a fool's errand, but let's try to understand who this judge is and the case that he's making. His name is Nick Modge. He's a retiring Luton Crown Court judge north of London, giving a farewell address before assembled judges, lawyers, and court staff. Lamenting that both criminal blade possession in England and Wales generally, and knife crime in London specifically, are at nine-year highs, and the fact that tougher sentencing guidelines are not correcting the problem, Judge Madge noted he doesn't see this issue as an access problem either. The majority of knives used in these crimes are simply taken from a kitchen drawer. Every kitchen contains lethal knives, which are are potential murder weapons, he said. So does every garage with cars and power tools. So does every living room with fireplace pokers. Wasn't this the point of the game Clue? Returning to our original point, the judge asks, why do we need 8-inch or 10-inch kitchen knives with points? Sure, butchers and fishmongers do, but how often does a domestic chef use the point of an 8-inch or 10-inch knife? Rarely, if at all. And if nobody really needs pointed blades, then the solution to the knife crime problem is obvious. Common sense knife control. I would urge all those with any role in relation to knives, manufacturers, shops, the police, local authorities, the government, to consider preventing the sale of long-pointed knives, except in rare, defined circumstances, and replacing such knives with rounded ends. And what about all those knives already in circulation? As he said, all those knives in every kitchen drawer in the country. Well, we'll just have a common sense knife modification program. The police can organize this program whereby the owners of kitchen knives, <coughs> everybody, yes, a program whereby everybody can take their knives lawfully possessed for legitimate culinary purposes, of course, to be taken somewhere for modification where the points can be ground down into rounded ends. See, if we can just get control of everything that could possibly be used as a weapon, there will be no more potential weapons left, apparently. This coming from the guy who's operating on the premise that existing laws designed to reduce the availability of weapons have had almost no effect. The trouble with this approach is when there are finally no more potential weapons left, there's really no more freedom left either. Inherent to the concept of freedom is the possibility that I may harm you, but we accept that risk as a consequence of a higher value and decide we'll deal with punishing me later if I exercise my freedom inappropriately. The reasoning at the heart of this argument is reasoning that can apply to the very concept of freedom itself. Who really needs freedom anyway? Do you really need to be free to survive? 
Do you really need to be free to decide for yourself how best to defend yourself and your family? Wouldn't you survive if you didn't have those freedoms? And might you even survive more safely? Of course you don't need freedom, but life's a hell of a lot better when you have it and manage potential negative consequences with personal responsibility. And the same is true for guns, the same is true for knives, the same is true for any fun thing that makes life worth living. I would much rather live the life I choose, accepting the risks of those choices and the burden of securing my own safety if things go wrong, than submit to the supposed wisdom of some judge who gets to decide what I really need or not. The only thing I don't need is that sort of tyranny. Even if you insist it's for my own good, I'll decide that for myself, thanks. And as always, thank you for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.